P6's molecules and matter. Um, so the kind of main thing that this is all focused around is the states of matter. So we have solids, we have liquids, and we have gases. Um, you need to, to draw a particle diagram for each of them. So if we imagine that this is the same substance that we're drawing a solid, a liquid and a gas for, so uh, we use circles to represent the particles. So if it's a solid, particles are in a regular formation and touching. If it is a liquid, then the particles are still touching, but they're just not in any kind of uh, regular kind of pattern. And then if it's a gas, then we have only a couple of particles and often you have these little lines to represent that they are moving. So you also need to know um, some stuff about the states of matter. So um, the particles in a solid and liquid are in contact. Um, so therefore um, they can't be compressed in a solid or a liquid. However, a gas, the particles are far apart, so it can be compressed, can compress, so we can compress a gas. Liquid and solid can't be compressed. Okay, so um, a solid, the particles are in fixed positions and they vibrate around those fixed positions. Whereas for a liquid and a gas, they can move uh, pretty freely. Um, so we can say that they flow. And this is what we call a fluid, <clears throat> a liquid or a gas, something that can flow. And that's because these particles can move past each other and then move completely freely. So with a solid, <clears throat> a solid has a fixed volume and shape. Uh, a liquid has a fixed volume because it can't be compressed. Um, so it has a fixed volume and it takes the shape of the container. So it will flow to take the shape of the container. And a gas has uh, no fixed volume, so it will expand to fill the container. Fills the container. Okay. So their properties, the solids, liquids and gases that you need to be aware of. There have been questions in the past where you have to... Um, you have to like link the properties, so how they behave to um, to the arrangement of the particles, you do need to be able to draw these sorts of diagrams as well. <clears throat> okay, so you also need to know the names of the changes of state. So if we're going from a solid to a liquid, this is called melting. If we're going from a liquid to a gas, this is called boiling. You do also have evaporation, which happens at um, a range of temperatures, but boiling happens at a very specific temperature called the boiling point. Um, if we have a gas turning into liquid, this is called condensing. And then a liquid into solid is freezing. So we have very specific temperatures, which are the melting point and the boiling point. So the melting point being the temperature at which it turns from a solid to a liquid. Um, and the temperature at which it turns from a liquid to a gas is called the boiling point called internal energy and this is the sum of the kinetic and potential energies of the particles okay so by kinetic energy we're talking about their movement and potential energies we're talking about their position so these particles that are in a substance how much are they moving so what's their kinetic energy and what is their position so here we've got them very close together here they're starting to move around more 
and then uh, in a gas they're moving very far away from each other so it's the summit but it is also about it's the energies of the particles so let's say this pen if i um change the temperature of the pen then the particles are going to move more if i increase the temperature of it the particles are going to move more um so that's the kinetic energy of the particles if i move the pen around like this i'm giving the pen kinetic energy but i'm not giving the particles kinetic energy so it is only when we're talking on a particle level and you will sometimes see uh, a graph and this is something that I know you did in chemistry as well. You probably did in year seven or year eight as well. And if we plotted um, the change in temperature against um, time um, on a graph and we had a substance that was a solid, we heated it up until it melted to become a liquid, heated it up until it um, boiled to become a gas, then we would end up with a line that would look like this. Okay, so you need to be able to interpret this graph. So, um, in fact, so at this point it is a solid, at this point it is a liquid, and at this point it is a gas. So solid, liquid, and gas. Um, and the changes of state are characterized by these flat horizontal lines. They are absolutely flat if they are, um, if it's a pure substance. If it's not a pure substance, you might get a curve or you might get um, a line that is kind of at a slight diagonal, but sort of flat. And each of these points refers to a specific temperature. So if we followed them along to the temperature axis, this would be the melting point because it's the point at which it goes from a solid to a liquid. So this would be the boiling point, because it's the point where it goes from a liquid to a gas. The temperature changes when the kinetic energy is changing. So as we're putting energy into the system, so we're heating something up, energy is going into um, the substance. When the temperature is changing, the kinetic energy is increasing. When it's changing state, the kinetic energy is no longer increasing but the potential energy is increasing. And that's because the position of the particles changes at the point where it changes state, okay? Um, and then the position is gonna change again, going from a liquid to a gas, these particles are gonna get much further away from each other. So this is to do with, so this is called latent heat at these points. So latent means hidden. And latent heat is basically the energy that's used to change state. And that's because you have bonds between these particles. So intermolecular bonds is what we call them. And those bonds change when you're changing state because of the position of the particles. So you need to know about a term called specific latent heat. And the definition of this is the energy required to change the state of one kilogram of a substance. So that's the basic um, definition, but we actually have two types of specific latent heat. We have specific latent heat of fusion, and this is going from a solid to a liquid at the melting, the melting point. And then we also have the specific latent heat of vaporization and I'm sure you've guessed, this is going from a liquid to a gas at the boiling point. So they're both the energy required to change the state of one kilogram of a substance, but if we're talking about specific latent heat of fusion, that's the energy required to change the state of one kilogram of a substance from a solid to a liquid at the melting point. And for vap vaporization, that is from a liquid to a gas at the boiling point. You get given this equation, you'll get given it in this form, energy is equal to mass times specific latent heat. You get given this in your um, equation sheet that's uh, in your paper. And the units for specific latent heat is joules per kilogram, because it's the energy required to change the state, so per unit mass. You need to, it's not an RPA, but there is a practical to measure the specific latent heat so you would have um, a substance. So the way that we did this um, in class 
was um, to have a beaker and in the beaker have a funnel and in the funnel have some ice and a heater. Okay, so the heater goes away to a joule meter and we've got ice. And what you do is you turn the heater on. The heater is obviously going to melt some of the ice and you're gonna end up with water down here. So you measure the mass of the water that you now have, which is the mass that has been changed state. You know the energy if you've got a joule meter, so therefore you can do energy divided by mass and that will give you the latent heat.